So, I watched the original Roadhouse for the first time the other day, and then I watched the remake. So let's talk about them both. On the original Roadhouse, I simultaneously get the hype and also think it's maybe slightly overhyped, maybe not. The premise, setup, and character introductions all feel pretty iconic, but it becomes victim to some issues of films like this at the time, and how much nudity there is, and how it objectifies women, and the overblown finale cheese. But man, it's pretty great overall. Patrick Swayze Goose is cool. Sam Elliott is a heck of a man. The fights are a ton of fun mostly, and there's something special about the music, setting, and general feel. I can see why so many adore it. But the rampant sex and nudity is distracting, stupid, and I feel sorry for the actresses in several disgusting moments of just terrible treatment of actresses. The film gets a bit too silly and hokey in that final fight and ends way too abruptly because everything had to be neat and whatever at the time but when it's focusing on the emotion and action it can be pretty electrifying and have some gut punches in its story there's a classy magic to the proceedings minus the objectification that just isn't felt by a lot of films anymore that movie magic that creates beloved classics i'm glad i finally saw it but when it comes to the remake i wanted to like it i really did but it's awful. Not only is it a complete failure as a remake comparatively offering nothing new or worthwhile, but it also fails as a movie in and of itself in just about every conceivable way. I am baffled by the use of CGI. Almost immediately we get a CGI post Malone in a fight. There's random CGI backdrops throughout and CGI doubles that weave in and out of fight scenes for no real reason. Speaking of, they try wonders or long takes of many of the fight sequences, but there's clear breaks with what looks to be AI generated frames to bridge the gaps in the shots to create longer takes. Not to mention the fights, while pretty well choreographed, admittedly, with glimpses of entertainment there, are very poorly staged with the camera. They shoot everything wide, which is good, right? No because they keep the camera uncomfortably close, creating the wrong kind of claustrophobia where I can't see anything going on. Then you add in whiplash from the literal whip pans, AI looking moments, and the fact that there looks to be artifacts from a lazily used warp stabilizer effect, and you've got a recipe for visually ugly, frustrating action. Don't even get me started on the big CGI stunts. The trucks and the boats and the explosions looks like stuff from the late 90s and not in a good way. And with lots of CGI within shots that don't need them, such as of the people, why? What did that achieve? Why not just use stuntmen to show off the choreography? No one knows. Was the film just so rushed that they just had to barely stitch it together and create artificial stuff? Heck if I know. You know, fighting celebrity Conor McGregor here in his first big role, throwing down with the legend Jake Gyllenhaal that with cool choreography, and that's how you choose to put it together? Good ideas don't mask a poor editing. And sure, some of those ideas are good on paper, such as the longer takes and the POV shots and the fights when they're first person and all. But speaking of Conor McGregor, he's been getting blasted online for his performance or lack thereof, and I completely disagree. Whenever he's on screen, he steals the show. He's a funny, outrageous, and evil character who is an agent of chaos. I love villains like that as they can be refreshing from cold and calculated. This dude just wants a good fight and absolutely loves what he does and McGregor chewed it up every chance he got. His natural athleticism made a lot of the execution issues easier to swallow at times. Same with Jake Gyllenhaal. You can tell he trained a ton and was excited to be in the movie, doing what looks to be quite a bit of the stunts himself. Unfortunately, and it pains me to say, I think he was a bit miscast. His nice guy demeanor comes off as a bit smug, so when the flip happens, it doesn't feel earned or even like we knew that it was coming. Whereas Patrick Swayze sold niceness as a way of staying calm and keeping his rage and violence from bursting out at any given moment until he can't anymore so it's ripping throats out. But in this, we barely see this version of Dalton even act as a bouncer. He doesn't have the same background, so you lose any cool world building, the premise, and point of the film. The writing completely fails him in that regard and inadvertently makes him an utter fool and disguises it as comedy. It gets super dark when he starts dropping bodies and the street justice is pretty cool, admittedly. But when he makes a speech about framing someone and hitting the guy so hard so he won't remember, only for that to not happen and to get laughed off, it's stupid. We don't know much about him. His backstory could have been compelling, but it's so vague and glossed over that the payoff of when he loses it is gone. In the original, his background was one of the best bouncers in the business. On top of killing someone when pushed into a corner, lurks over the whole movie so that when he's pushed to the edge, it feels tense and exciting. That is replaced with a false sense of bravado and seriousness that has that entertainment factor inherently to it, but is again botched with execution so poor and with such bad humor. There is a side character henchman, nice dude, who repeatedly made me laugh though. That guy was the MVP of the movie with his honesty. Seriously, he was great. But there's so much of this movie where it feels like nothing happens, but it seems like there is. 
who's a doctor who's mad he brought patients to get help, who ends up having zero chemistry with Jake Gyllenhaal while they take her ex-boyfriend's boat out because of reasons, and he's a cop which has no bearing on the story at all. There's random explosives sitting around with no real reason and a bookstore becomes important, more important than the titular roadhouse. And sure, some of the music is there, but there are guys getting beat to death and the bar getting destroyed beyond just tables and chairs and they just keep playing when the roof is coming down. In the original, this is set up quite well as part of the usual, but the new one takes this idea way too far. The original makes the double deuce feel like a character in the movie with its atmosphere and its evolution over the runtime. Here, they can't even be bothered to give it a real name and we end up caring more about a bookstore than the actual roadhouse. There's also a nonsense real estate plot when the bad guy could have committed arson with cops on his payroll and he covered it up. Literally, my wife said, why don't they just burn it down when no one's there? Like if I know, it doesn't make any logistical sense. It's bad writing. There's a mystery around why Dalton was hired, which is never really explained. Some double double crosses. There are a waste of runtime and too many things going on or meandering around side characters that don't matter. And yes, there's moments of brilliance in the setup of the action and some gnarly brutality that has entertainment value to it and a lot of creativity in how they want to show it. But with such bad end results, the worst and most pointless visual effects of the 2020s, terrible writing and a mostly disinterested cast, despite Conor McGregor who's having the time of his life and excited Jake Gyllenhaal, feels like he's playing it all wrong. It's a disaster. And I cannot believe that the director and lead actor felt proud enough to privately screen it for Jeff Bezos in order to try to secure a theatrical release. Spoilers, it didn't get one. But because it's streaming, it's been watched by a lot of households, which makes it sound successful and that's the benefit of the platform. You get excited, charismatic actors in a remake of a cult classic and people will watch it when it's on something they own. But make no mistake, this is a shut off your brain movie if there ever was one, but not in the fun way. Because if you begin thinking about it, or paying attention to it, or dare to compare it to the great original, it completely falls apart. In fact, it maybe bumped the original up in retrospect with how well, that one approached character, its setting, and story, and action. I do like the idea of this one being moved to the Florida Keys in southern Missouri. It does give it a unique feel with some great settings to the action, including a darkly funny scene with a crocodile and a rare moment of genius that delivered on execution as well as on paper. <coughs> have you noticed how I have to keep saying, all right, well, this one was briefly the fun part, I guess. If you have to keep saying that, that's a problem. And finally, I will say, one more time, that the film, it, it could have at many points, completely objectified the women and men, and it never does. That's appreciated. The problem is, though, there's so much content out nowadays that people mindlessly consume, and that this is getting up way more of a pass than it should in that realm, makes me sad and worried. I do not say this often and I do not say it lightly, but it is a soulless cash grab in one of the worst movies I've seen in some time. If you watched this and enjoyed it, good for you. Sincerely, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. But I would also encourage you and urge you to watch the original with Patrick Swayze. I had just seen it the other day. It's not like I had some great love for it because I grew up with it. And despite being very of the time with a ton of nudity, seriously, content warning. It's a great film. But with this one, my wife and I were just baffled by the creative repro reproach as a remake straight to the trash for me. I give the original Roadhouse four out of five stars and the Roadhouse remake one out of five stars. Apparently there's another Roadhouse from like the 40s but I don't think it's related at all and there's a Roadhouse 2 about Dalton's son from like 2006. I probably won't bother. Thanks so much for watching. What did you think of the Roadhouse remake? Did, do you prefer the original one? Am I wrong? Tell me why in the comments below and remember always look for the good. I'm telling myself that one pretty heavily this time.